Hello everyone, this is Mandy coming at you from Historic Johnson Farm. And today we're gonna talk with some of the members of the Heritage Weavers and Fiber Artists. We have Marjorie Kruger and Roberta Platt here. Uh, and so I'm gonna turn it over to them. Thank you. Welcome to the boarding house, the home of Heritage Weavers and Fiber Artists. Um, we have been in residence here at the farm for about 10 years. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about how we got here what we have and where we came from. Um, Heritage Weavers began as a small group of weavers uh, that worked in a studio um, in another location in Hendersonville. And we had been there for many, many years in one form or another. The original group was begun by a woman named Bessie Jordan, who was a weaver and educator in Henderson County. And as it happens, a friend of the Johnsons as well. Um, she had begun this craft group in the 50s, and the weaving group had um, perpetuated itself for all of those years. But in um, the late 2000s, we were beginning to wish that we had more scope for activity of different kinds, other types of crafts, um, more children's programs, and just in general, a little more elbow room. Um, as it happened at the time, the uh, Johnson Farm Administration was also looking for something to do with this building. Now, this building was the boarding house for the farm. When the, um, the family that ran the farm ran out of bedrooms in the farmhouse, uh, the brothers ended up sleeping in the barn so that their rooms could be used for, for guests. And they grew tired of this. And so as young men in 1924, they built this building simply as a boarding house. It had uh, four large bedrooms downstairs, four large bedrooms and three small ones upstairs, and one bathroom on each floor. And I often tell the children this was not the Holiday Inn Express. <laughs> this was a different kind of summer vacation. Uh, because it was only used in the summer, um, it had no heating or air conditioning, no insulation, no duct work, and so it was just closed up in the winter months. Uh, when the Johnson family stopped taking in boarders, they simply closed this building in the 50s, and it had been sitting here empty and closed, used for storage. Um, at that time, when the weavers were looking for some place to be, one of our members actually got a chance to come inside the building at one of the farm's festivals and thought, this is the place, this is where we are meant to be. And um, other members were able to connect with the farm board and make arrangements for us to lease the building. Um, because it wasn't suitable for year-round use, um, the, the farm administration was able to get a grant from Blue Ridge Heritage Foundation um, to rehab the building. And the entire inside had to be taken out, ductwork put in, insulation, and it all had to be re-drywalled. Um, there was plumbing and electric, but it had to be brought up to code. Um, and so in the fall of 2009, the Heritage Weavers and Fiber Artists moved in and set up shop. Now this room, as you can see, was two rooms. You can see the space on the floor where the wall was, but we call this our loom room for obvious reasons. Um, it is full of looms and we needed a big place to have these. We own all of the looms. They are quite different, many of them in size and type. Um, they're used for different things depending on what your project is. This big loom in the back was used to make this rug. It's a four by six wool rug. It takes a wide, heavy loom to make something like that. The one over here is not as heavy, but it's just as wide. And so we can make rag rugs on this one. These are placemats, but they would look very much like that at a full width. Um, the small looms towards the front can be used for scarves or placemats or tea towels or anything linear and not too wide. Our special loom is this one right here, which belonged to Bessie Jordan, the woman that I spoke of earlier. Um, it's an antique, but it is very much workable. We keep a project on it so that we can 
um, we could use it and produce at this time kitchen towels. Um, some of her work is above here. Her antique coverlet that she made is there. So this is a room that gets a lot of use and a lot of creativity going on here. If you follow me, Roberta will take over in this area back here and tell you a little bit about some of our classes. This is our basket room. It serves several purposes actually, but we do uh, have basket classes in here and you can see around us the supplies for baskets and for dyeing. We do reed dyeing as well as fiber dyeing. So uh, when, I, when I say fiber, I mean threads. Like if you, Mandy, if you show them, um, these are the types of things that our weavers buy from the heritage weavers and use on the looms to make their towels and rugs and whatever. A lot of this yarn um, has been purchased by heritage weavers, but a lot of it is donated. There are many dedicated weavers who pass on and their families donate all of their supplies to us, which is wonderful actually. Now, these are a couple of baskets that have been made here. And we do have some basket classes coming up. We've got a nesting basket set and a double wine basket set coming. This is um, we a little whimsical kind of a snowman or a snow woman. Um, we do a snow angel sometimes at Christmas time. We offer classes in many different types of basket making, as well as um, some dyeing classes. We have a silk scarf dyeing class um, that will may very well take place out here on our patio, which is where we do some of our messier crafts so that we can just hose them down. Now we're going to go upstairs and show you some other pieces that we do upstairs, our classroom, our library, and um, most of all some of the other items that we teach here. So Mandy, if you want to go on upstairs. Oh, I think we're going to go to the gift shop first. Yes, though, aren't we're going we? to stop. Yes. Okay. We're going to stop on the way in our gift shop. We're very proud of this because it displays the handwork of all of our, many of our members. All of the items in here are handmade by our members who are able to place them here on consignment. Um, and people love to come and shop, especially during the farm festivals. Um, so it's really quite um, a display and demonstration of the talent and creativity in fiber arts that uh, many of our members are capable of and we're so glad that they share them with the rest of us.